Jonathan Schick with you again with another episode of Stisselman, and we are at the season finale of uh, season two. So my apologies, first of all, it's been a few weeks since I put a video out, and there's really two reasons for that. One, we are coming upon the Rosh Hashanah and the Jewish High Holidays, and in addition to life and everything that happens with life, there's also um, a lot of um, preparations, including the fact that I do uh, serve as a chazan, as the one of the cantors in the service in the synagogue, the shul that I attend. But the primary reason why this has been delayed is because this episode is so full of plots and subplots and so many things to talk about and so many things as we wrap up this wonderful season two that I just didn't know. I was a little bit frozen in terms of where to turn, in terms of where to discuss and what areas. So finally I settled upon the, probably the most um, tragic and, you know, but, but most telling uh, point and scene in, in this season and uh, in this particular episode, which is the, the path of Shulam, the main, the main character, the, the main uh, individual who we uh, look to for both comic relief and also pathos and also just, you know, he's the character of all characters in this show. So where else to discuss but the journey of Shulam as we come to a close of this season. Shulam is horrified that Akira has painted an image of their dear departed mother with what seems to be her hair partially uncovered and an unbecoming scene, even though of course this means tremendous, it's a tremendously moving and sensitive painting for Akiva as it represents him as a baby, etc., etc. But or Vichulu, as we say. Um, but um, what he does is so drastic and so radical, he takes money that he was offered to sell the burial plot that was between his mother and his wife. And of course, as you see in the show, he ends up selling it to his, you know, cunning and lying brother, Nachum, for $11,000. And of course, even Izzy Kaufman, the uh, idealist in, uh, in terms of art, can't turn down that offer. The painting is sold and Shulam, thinking that he is uh, promoting his wife memory, instead is desecrating the painting. You can make your own interpretation about you know whether it's a desecration or not. Uh, clearly his intentions were, quote, you know, were basically good, but it was a Shanda, a terrible thing, both in terms of, you know, his own story arc, his own personality development, and his certainly his, his relationship with his son. So he ends up protecting the mother, but really he's just, you know, completely paralyzed by grief. And this is really part of why he's doing it. His loneliness, he's even losing Akiva, as he knows, to Livy. And is just a, just a sort of culmination of tremendous grief and loss that leads him to, you know, defy all this painting. Now, before I get to an analysis that is connected to this, um, one cute little Easter egg, you know, an Easter egg is things when they plan things into the series. So I think this might have been done by the writers. Why 11,000? by the way, my 11,000. So I think it's 11 because 11 are the months that a person prays for the memory of the, of the, um, the yard site till the, uh, from the time the person dies for 11 months to Kaddish, the famous Kaddish prayer is said. It's only said for 11 months and then when you hit the 12th month and any anniversary, which is called the yard site every year of the death of the day of the death, then Kaddish is again repeated and said, but 
for the first year of the loss of the wife, husband, child, God forbid, and anyone, God forbid, or parent, it's 11 months. So that might have been the little sort of uh, Easter egg type of thing hidden in the series. But I want to discuss one important piece related to this all. What What's the deal with why is it important where you're buried? And what's wrong with cremation for that matter, you know? Notice that there's no cremating going on in the Orthodox world, and we have tremendous, tremendous reasons not to. And it's not only, although it's connected, because of what happened in the Holocaust, and that is quite a reason alone why people who are not Orthodox or just Jewish will resist cremation because, of course, back in the, the terrible times of the Holocaust, bodies were, you know, incinerated. That's certainly a important reason, but that's not actually the whole story. And the reason we don't cremate, and then we'll get to the reason why the burial place is important. The reason we don't cremate is because both the body and the soul were created by God to serve God and to live a fulfill, fulfilling and meaningful life. And therefore, as opposed to Christianity, which looks at the body as part of the original sin, our body should be laid to the ground as well and given its proper honor because it was used, at least for some part of one's life, for holy pursuits. And that's the ultimate way of living a life, of combining the body and soul into a, into a harmonious type of being. So both the body and soul serve God and the body and soul together should be buried. The soul lives on, the body is laid to the ground because we honor both. Of course, in Judaism, not for this conversation, but we believe that the body and soul will once again be reunited, which is another reason to not cremate. Um, but the bottom line is that that's the reason we don't do cremation. But then what's this whole deal about where you're being buried? Like, why is it important both to Shulam and Nachum that you're buried next to your loved one or someone that you consider to be holy? And also this reason is connected with the first reason because we do believe that what one does in one's body, bodily life, is can be done as in a holy pursuit. And if someone lives a life which actually is a life of righteousness or a life that was imperfect because we all live imperfect lives, but does do teshuva and we're coming up upon the high holidays and that's times of returning to God and does, you know, repent of whatever misfires they've done. Uh, that person is considered a holy person, a righteous person. And if a person is buried next to a righteous person. The righteous person lives on, we all live on, both body and soul combined. And we may first live on only as a soul, and then later on, God willing, the resurrection of the dead where the bodies and souls combine again. But there's an aura, there's a influence of the tzaddik, the righteous person. And a tzaddik doesn't have to be a holy rabbi. We all know, of course, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, for example, the tent or the ohel where people flock to and have make pilgrimages to. They do it because there's an aura, there's a influence of that tzaddik, of that great person that can affect a person, even though the person, the, the, the tzaddik is no longer physically alive, but they're still quite alive. Um, and that permeates that burial place. So here too, the being buried next to one's loved one, being next to one's saintly mother, could make an influence as an important thing, not just for, you know, being close to a relative, but actually it could be good for the soul even in the world to come. So these are all very interesting and Kabbalistic ideas and some metaphysical, but the bottom line is that these are things that are all part of the story arc and the sort of the um, uh, uh, Jewish component of Shtisel. And this is why what, what makes Shtisel so great and so permeating, not just the personalities, 
but the real deep dive into the Jewish understanding and culture, which is so meaningful and so powerful. We hope you enjoyed and we'll return with more Shtisel episodes after the high holidays, beginning with season three and our final season that we'll be doing with Shtisel. And God willing, there'll be a season four. And God willing, even better, the redemption, Mashiach, will come soon in a speedily in our days, as we say. And we will all experience the world to come living on this earth which is the times of Mashiach. I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful high holidays. And again, please subscribe, please share only for the purpose of sharing this wonderful series and the ideas of Judaism to the world. Thanks so much.